Hi Keeper folks, this is Pete58 with Shadow the Hedgehog, and uh, this is our first video, which uh, I hope will be of many, of uh, a new series called Bad Movie Reviews. Now, I love bad movies, and uh, there's tons of them on Netflix, and uh, movies I review on this video series will be movies you can watch if you dare to on Netflix. Now, for the first movie I wanted to review, I didn't want to go with a something new. I wanted to do something uh, that I thought, uh, you know, was uh, something that was bad, but it's been around for a while, because there's a lot of bad movies on Netflix that are brand new, and I wanted to try with something original. So, for this uh, review, I am doing Hero and the Terror. It's an 80s, um... I guess action flick starring Chuck Norris, you know, a uh, good old kung fu uh, Chuck Norris, and uh, also starring other people you haven't heard of, like Steve James and Billy Drago. Now, the, the thing that makes this movie bad, uh, well, let, let me just start it off. Okay, the, the movie starts with uh, good old Chucky. Uh, he's having a, a bad dream, and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's from a few years ago. It's a flashback dream, and he's uh, chasing after this big man-child uh, a la, like, you know, Lenny from Mice and Men, you know, just a big uh, stupid man-child, you know, because... Uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, Chuck Norris is chasing after him. Uh, they don't call for backup, you know, and uh, he goes and uh, <laughs> what really makes this movie special is that you actually get to see Chuck Norris get his ass kicked. That's something you don't see, you know. I mean, this is a movie from the 80s. He was already a household name by this time. So for him to get his ass kicked in a movie, it's pretty interesting, you know. I, I didn't see it too much in any other movie he's ever done. Uh, but, yeah, this guy, this big man-child, just kind of, you know, grabs his face and goes, Boosh, and he just fuck, you know, he fucks up Chuck's day, you know. And, you know, he's, and he actually runs away. Chuck Norris runs away from this guy. And, and the only reason why this idiot gets caught is because as Chuck Norris is running away, uh, he, the, the villain, Simon Moon, uh, he, he grabs him, uh, Chuck Norris by the ankle, and he slips and, hits his chin on every rung of the ladder on the way down. And that was how they caught him. And, you know, of course, you know, that's that's not a confidence builder. You know, I mean, especially when you're Chuck fucking Norris. I mean, this is the guy who doesn't do push-ups. He pushes the earth down, okay? So for him to get his ass kicked <laughs> and have a ladder save his life, it, that is kind of sad. So anyway, we flash forward to uh, a few years later. Uh, apparently there was a trial. You don't see any of it. Uh, this uh, Simon Moon, the terror, as he's nicknamed, he goes to jail, or not to jail, but he goes to a uh, a place where they're criminally insane for his, the rest of his life, I guess. They don't really uh, specify, uh, I don't believe. And uh, <laughs> so they got him all uh, locked up in this room, and he's doing arts and crafts. And uh, he, <laughs> he breaks out of this, uh, I guess, prison, if you want to call it that, because there were bars on the window. Uh, but he breaks out using a uh, some black sand, chapstick, and dental floss. And he breaks out right in the middle of broad daylight, uh, actually cuts through a couple of bars to a window that looks out on a parking lot where there's people driving and walking by, but nobody noticed him. And he got every bar cut and he snuck out. And he winds up driving off a cliff into the water, so obviously he survived. It's the beginning of the movie. He's obviously not dead. <laughs> So anyway, uh, they, <laughs> they 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 flash forward. Uh, he breaks out of jail. He, he supposedly dies, uh, but he drives, jumps into the Snake River in this van, and uh, then they go to Chuck Norris, who uh, you know basically you know he he's worried you know because people have have called him the hero even though he doesn't feel like a hero. He's not confident. And, and that's really hard to buy, and, and you know, from Chuck Norris. So I'm not confident, because through this whole movie, he's, he's kind of just like, well, I, I, I don't know. You know, he says to his chief, how do you know it's, it's Simon Moon, or, or whatever. He's like, I don't know. What do you mean you don't fucking know? You're a cop. Figure it out. But, uh, you know, it's it must be a good job, because he drives a Corvette in the movie. It's a pretty sweet vehicle. You know, on a cop's salary? You know, shit. He must be doing something right. But uh, his character is not buffoonish, but just... Uh, he lacks confidence, you know. He's he's with this woman who, for some reason, they uh, they they get pregnant. 
then they move in together and then they want to get married which is fine it just didn't make any sense and i mean i guess it did considering his character is not at all confident you know but he's chuck norris because he does do some martial arts in this in this movie you know it's you know it's kind of hard to believe that someone like chuck norris or a character playing him you know who knows karate gets his ass kicked by just some dude who was big you know and then you know he still is like well i i don't i don't know you know i it, i don't know why he didn't want to kill this person or that you know uh after a, about a half hour or so into the movie they they figure out he is where he's hiding out and uh, they do not perform a search, uh, uh, you know, because uh, there is a whole press conference where they didn't want to get the city in a panic, so they had Chuck Norris lie and say, oh, no, it's not the, the Simon Moon guy. So, anyway, they know he's in the theater, and uh, they know where he's hiding out, and they don't do a search of this theater. And uh, they just have uh, Steve James, uh, this cop, just go jogging around the theater and uh he confronts him and gets his ass kicked and killed by this uh this simon moon the terror and you know then the plot really doesn't move forward uh it does but begrudgingly uh, we get to a point in this movie where it's you know you realize the police are incompetent and they they find out information right now about this character uh simon moon this killer well he he he's, he's just uh, he doesn't think he's just a killing machine a process thought and all this shit they didn't figure this out in the trial they you know chuck norris had to talk to this guy afterwards after he escaped after he killed a bunch of people and you know but apparently no they just they just figured that out right now you know they only put him in that mental hospital because the jails were already filled i guess so i don't know but uh yeah you see uh you know a lot of weird bad police work you know it's eventually they do search it and uh they still don't find him but uh they have to search again, and uh, Chuck Norris does eventually find him, and it's uh, it's an okay fight, you know. I mean, you got to consider that, you know, th th this movie was done by Golan Globus. You know, if you want an action movie with Chuck Norris uh, from the '80s, this is not the movie. Uh, however, the production company of this movie did make, uh, I believe, was it Invasion USA and Delta Force. Now, those are some really good action movies this is not and it's there's a little bit of action but i don't know it's more like a, i guess a, a psychological thing I, I don't fucking know it's not a very good movie uh I, it was okay when i was a kid and i just saw it on netflix i said all right i'll do this movie and it just uh, it's not very good there's a little bit of martial arts action but not much i mean it's just basically about this hulking idiot you know who who doesn't you know all he does is just snap you know some chick's neck like, like that. that's all he does you know it's not really crazy sexy weird stuff like red dragon or you know anything crazy like that it's just you know he snaps their necks and, and you know okay you know but it's going globus i mean if you've ever seen invasion usa there's more gore in that movie than in this movie you know this movie's just about a guy you know with brute force and uh, a, a, a detective who's a you know karate master who lacks confidence however there is a, a happy ending uh you know just you know chuck norris just you know holding his arm around a priest and you know his girlfriend i do i do well <laughs> okay you do what you want you know it's the fucking 80s you know but uh, uh, all in all this is a really it's kind of a hard movie to watch for me when i was a kid it was easier because it was chuck norris and you know, he was always kicking people's asses, but this was one movie you, you actually get to see him get his ass kicked, and that's a rare, rare thing. You know, I've seen a lot of his movies, and uh, he's gotten into, like, you know, fights, but this was a movie where right in the beginning, he gets face paint. He gets, like, you know, Kane or The Undertaker from WWE when they just do that. Just, I mean, you see that shit happen. So, And that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty interesting to see. You know, if there's any reason to watch this movie, Hero and the Terror, it's that, you know, because you really don't ever see that. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's, he was a household name by the 80s, like I said, so, you know, it's not like he was stuck with this movie. He could have just been like, wow, no. you know, I mean, he did a lot of movies for this production company, and this was just, you know, it seems like the, the, the strange one out of the ones I have seen, you know, and he's done a lot of movies, even since the 70s. You know, with all his martial arts expertise. So, for him to do this movie, I, it's kind of strange. I don't know. I wasn't there at the time. I'm sure he had a reason. They probably paid him a lot of money. You know, he made a lot of movies for Golan Globus. So, he may have been under contract. I don't know. But, uh, if that, there's any reason to watch that movie, uh, it would be that. To see him actually get his ass kicked. Uh, other than that, it's, it's you know, it's... <sighs> 
it's a real hard watch because it's like you know shitty police work uh, a lot of actors you never heard of and that's not always bad but sometimes it is because it's like you know you never heard of them because they suck uh, you know the acting's stupid uh, they're in California but for some reason there's there's a detective with a New York accent and he's Italian I don't know but uh, yeah just a lot of you know stupid random shit that I didn't like and uh, when you combine all that little stuff it makes it harder to watch in the end I think you know I mean the guy breaks out of jail or whatever out of his prison like cell room you know with dental floss chapstick and just some you know black sandy powder that he was doing arts and crafts with right before that scene and he breaks out of jail in the middle of broad daylight in less than like five minutes cutting through these solid steel bars you know you, i understand what moves you gotta stretch disbelief a little but you know it was right out in the parking lot where there's people walking around i mean nobody saw this big hulking man child of an idiot you know who sna who snaps necks like you know like that like it's no big deal and nobody noticed well uh, i mean what are you gonna do but that's uh, that's my review for Hero on the Terror. It's available on Netflix right now, and uh, if you have the guts, uh, watch it. Maybe you'll like it. I you know I used to when I was a kid, but I've grown up since then. Uh, what did you think of it, Shadow? It sucked. Well, you know, what do you expect from him? All right, are you ready to spin dash us out of here? Yes. Remember, my book, The Time Rippers, is available on Amazon.com as well as my other written works. And uh, please spin dash that like and sub button and share, share, share. Spin dash, spin dash. Shall you keep up?